What's up, peers, and welcome back to the World Crypto Network, continuing our uh, analysis of the awesome cold card wallet for true cold storage in your offline signing device. And we've already talked about a lot of the nuances here, and today we will pick up from the very in-depth documentation uh, here in the firmware folder on GitHub and talking specifically about the backups of the files. Uh, these guides are written by Peter Gray and by Clark Moody. Uh, so thank you to both of these contributors uh, for, for sketching out the nuances. And of course, the backup feature is quite important. Uh, and the cool thing is that you can have a dedicated backup on a dedicated, really secure uh, SD card uh, that is encrypted and everything and very nice. And the cool thing here is long-term backup on SD cards encrypted. Uh, so hopefully uh, you will uh, find some value in here. Uh, starting to read the documentation. The user can do a full backup of the cold card to external SD cards. Simply choose the option from the menu and the cold card will pick a strong password for you and display it. Uh, actually, really strong here, 24 wor uh, sorry, 12 words. Uh, so a lot of bits here in the entropy, which is really nice. And again, uh, don't roll your own crypto. Uh, don't make your own random number generator in your head. Uh, use strong cryptography and strong, uh, or, well, pseudo random number, uh, pretty, uh, pretty strong random number generator. Uh, the file will be created as a standard 7-zip archive with AES 256-bit encryption in the CBC mode. The 256-bit key is a SHA-256 hash of a passphrase, hashed in a particular way to support the 7C compatibility. We know the passphrase has at least 128 bits of entropy because the cold card uses its true random number generator to pick it. And so we actually know that we have 128 bit of entropy in the passphrase itself, and that then is hashed in, uh, with SHA-256 to generate the SHA-256 bit key. Really nice. Once decrypted, uh, which is possible using any 7-zip archive tool, uh, the contents are simple text files with everything you could need to access your funds in any emergency using another wallet system. Again, uh, so you decrypt the archive with the 7C tool, and this then contains in simple plain text all the private key, extended private keys, individual private keys, uh, fingerprints, public keys, and all that good stuff that you would need to know. Uh, but again, you can only decrypt this when you have the 12 word uh, passphrase uh, that is part here of the key. Restoring the backup file onto a replacement cold card is a simple process that merely requires entering the 12 words. Uh, which again, really nice. If you have a second cold card lying around, it doesn't even have to be on a hot computer. Really cool. Is it secure? We use AES-256 encryption wrapped in a 7C archive. The passphrase is chosen at random as 12 words from the BIP39 word list. Uh, actually, as a nuance here, uh, we first choose a random number, uh, then we add a couple uh, like, uh, checksums and references uh, and stuff like this, and then we pick byte for byte which word fits that random number string. Uh, so, so that is actually, I think, how it is being generated. The given, this gives effectively 132 bits of security without any key stretching. The 7C file format adds a 16-byte salt and random 60-byte in, uh, initialized vector, plus a few tens of thousands of rounds of key stretching. We are not relying on that, however, because of a long key itself, a 128 bits. Uh, really nice, so really long key, and we increase that with even more randomness uh, here in the 7-zip format. Uh, proving it works. Because we are using a standard file format, you can verify the process and that the data is in fact encrypted. Any 7C tool that supports AES SHA-256 encryption uh, should be able to read the files we make. Take the 12 words and put them together with a single space between each word, all lowercase, that the decode archive will contain a single file, a cold card backup TXT which is a simple text file and easy to read. Again, this is, this is well, I guess it's probably not a standard format, uh, but rather something specific here to the cold card. Uh, 
but because everything is human readable and because the individual keys uh, and, and public private keys and stuff like this are actually standardized you should be able to from this text file then load your private key into any other wallet limitations the archive file names are not encrypted you can see ckcc backup.txt in the hex dump of the encoded file encoded as utf 16 le bytes Okay, so an attacker could potentially see that this is a cold card backup file. Uh, so even if it's encrypted, right, he cannot break the encryption, but he can see that it is valuable information. The device pin code is not preserved during the backup. Okay, so the pin itself uh, cannot be uh, put onto this backup, uh, right? So you may have to make sure that you have this on a separate, uh, well, backup. We produce standard compliant files, but do not support reading any file encrypted that once produced by cold card. Um, yeah, okay, so your cold card cannot read uh, anything else except those that are uh, encrypted from the cold card. So if you use, for example, your computer uh, to generate a 7-zip archive that is encrypted, cold card will not be able to read this. Um, probably a security thing, because uh, why would you want to import something that was generated outside of the cold card? Uh, that might be a huge attack vector, I guess. Do not attempt to edit the file and restore it onto a cold card. Uh, so if you edit the file, right, it will no longer be processed by the cold card. You cannot construct a file for the cold card to read because we implement only enough to support reading files that we know that we have produced. Uh, so. You know, again, security thing, only the stuff that actually is in the firmware can be processed here in the cold card. And external data, our file structures just are not. <laughs> there is no plausible deniability here. The 7C file is clearly a cold card backup file. Uh, so again, if people see that this file here in your uh, storage, then they know it is a cold card backup file. They do not know which private key, which public key it is. They do not know if, it, if there are coins on there, but they know it's a cold card backup. Okay, and we, here we see an encrypted example file uh, with the HD of the backup of 7-zip. Uh, here with bits and then some random stuff, and here some more bits. It uh, looks somewhat like the Genesis block, <laughs> but, well, it's different. If you're playing at home, the passphrase for the above file is spice until comfort zoo divide album erode yard imitate change quantum and skate. And maybe in one of the next videos we can uh, check how this actually or if this actually is valid. You can grab the example file here and test it yourself uh, or use a real cold card to make your own. Uh, really nice. Okay, uh, so we will test this in one of the next videos. So the archive contents, the 7C, one backup.7C is a 7SIP 64 bit of 15.09 beta uh, with all this scanning device for archive and we have this backup. Uh, so it will show the path is to the backup uh, 7Z, which is also the type, the physical size of 720 size, the header of 142 and the method 7C with AES encryption um, with one block. So we don't have date and time, but we have size and the compressed and how many files it is. Very nice. No passphrase is required to do this, and it does not check the CRC32 values. To simply tunicate and unintentionally corrupt can be easily detected without knowledge of the passphrase. So this is what any malicious attacker might see, right? And he clearly sees that this is a, a cold card backup TXT file uh, with the exact size. So to decrypt the archive, which you then need to, or you require the passphrase, which is 7CX of the backup 7C. And that then shows the scanning device for archive, shows all this stuff again. And now enter the passphrase. Uh, it will not be echoed, okay? So you enter this passphrase here in the black space. And then if it's valid, and then everything is okay. With size 59, size 702. This pr uh, procedure creates a file the cold card backup.txt in the current directory. And the contents of this file then are, and you can read them with cat of ckk or ckcc backup.txt. And so you see here, uh, cold card backup file do not change. Uh, private key details, it shows the mnemonic right here. 
It shows the extended private key right here. It shows the raw secret, uh, the actual seed which is used. Uh, the firmware version, uh, which is only informational here, uh, depending of course on the firmware date, firmware version, and the user preferences, uh, okay, and end of file. Very nice. So this is what is actually included here in the contents of the backup uh, file. As you can see, it is a simple text file and you need to access your funds without the help of cold card. It would be a simple matter to import the extended private key or the monomic into another wallet. Uh, well, very nice, Pierce. This is how you can actually do the setup right here. Actually, you know what, let's actually just do it and uh, download this file right here, right? This, uh, this example file right here. Uh, and we can, we can check it out uh, by, uh, well, it actually, let's right here, right? I have it uh, in the, uh, I have it right here, right? Uh, so I can now do HD backup and it will show exactly what we see right here uh, to then you know, be all the gibbery text. Uh, so it is encrypted. Very nice. Uh, we could also do 7-zip list the backup, which will then show exactly uh, how many files are in there. And it shows the file name of this backup. Uh, so that is also very interesting. And then with 7-zip x backup, uh, we can uh, go into here the well, uh, backup phase. So let me copy the monomic seed uh, right here uh, and then pasting this and it will every, so it will say everything is okay. Right, so we have sized and decompressed. And now we can read the uh, cold card backup file, uh, which here shows do not change, right? Private key details with the monomic that we have uh, and the extended public key, private key that we have with the raw secret and the firmware version. Uh, so this is actually how you, or how you could uh, decrypt your uh, backup uh, again, if you do that on a hot computer, uh, like your laptop, uh, then of course your private key and your monomic uh, will be burned and you should immediately sweep the funds. Right, so uh, we, will, we will then do in uh, maybe the next video uh, how to do this on the cold card itself uh, to verify uh, the uh, backup and everything. Uh, so Pierce, I guess this is it for now. Uh, we have done here a reading of the pa or of the backup design uh, here in the cold card documents, and I hope this got somewhat more clear to you. Uh, so we use uh, we use a strong password generated with the true random number generator uh, of the cold card, uh, hashed with SHA-256, and used in IS encryption for a standard seven zip archive. Uh, and that is rather secure. Uh, we can prove that it works. Uh, and as you have seen, it's rather usable uh, to do with just a couple commands. So Piers, this was it for today's video of the cold card wallet. Uh, and we uh, will here uh, in one of the next videos then uh, continue uh, with the backup process and all the magic stuff. If you have any questions, then check out the HODL hotline for a humble donation of 1.5 million sats. Uh, you can book uh, your question and answer session with me. Uh, thank you very much for joining me here today and see you on the next show. Bye-bye.